Hi, this is Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, we're here in the Music City, USA. That's right, Nashville, Tennessee, for the 28th Annual Shelby American Automobile Club's National Meet. Now, there are some truly magnificent Shelby Mustangs and Cobras here at the Nashville Super Speedway, and they're chomping at the bit for track time. So before the squeal of tires and the rev of engines gets too loud, Rick Kopech's going to tell us a little bit about SAC 28. Hi, Dennis. Rick's great to be here. What a day. Oh, this is amazing, isn't it? Who, who's have. responsible for this? Well, Carol Shelby has to take the credit for this. He makes <laughs> things happen. He does. he does. He's got power not just in the cars, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got a lot going on here at this uh, this Shelby extravaganza. What else happened this weekend? Well, we have three days of activities. That uh, Yesterday, we had a vintage race practice all day in a ladies' performance driving school. Uh, we let everybody go to the Grand Ole Opry last night. We didn't have anything scheduled. And then today we've got open track all day. We've got a, glo a white glove concourse that's going on right now. And the swap meet is going on. People being able to buy and sell Ford and Shelby parts. And then tomorrow we'll have a popular vote car show and then an open track uh, event and the, uh, the vintage race. So how many, how many cars do you think you'll have over the weekend? We'll probably have about 750 cars here total. I mean, that's a heck of a lot of Shelbys in one place. Well, they're not all Shelbys. Any performance Ford uh, car is eligible. Um, anything from late model Mustangs and Mustang Cobras to Panteras and Tigers and Boss Mustangs and just about anything that's Ford engine and has a high performance motor, um, they're welcome. Now, this is the first time for the event at this track, right? Yes. We move, we move it around the country every year, and this is the first time we've been in Nashville. And we try to put it in different areas of the country so that people can bring their cars from, from within a 500 mile radius. They don't have to bring them across the country. Shelby is uh, an amazing draw. It gets in your blood and it, it becomes part of your life. It's a disease. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> but there's no cure, but it's not fatal. <laughs> well, now, you've, uh, you've got one of these beasts yourself, don't you? Yep, I have a, a factory race car, 65 Shelby. Well, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to get around a couple times with you. You know, I, I think we can, we can manage that. Uh, we need a helmet, though. You know, I, I happen to bring one with me. It's in the car. What a coincidence. Go figure, right? What? Let's get it. The Shelby American Automobile Club Nationals is an annual event of some 700 high-performance Ford-powered automobiles, specifically Shelby Mustangs and Cobras. We owe the very existence of these legends of street and strip to none other than Carol Shelby, who's become quite a legend himself. I was lucky enough to spend some time chatting with Carol. Well, Carol, this is a rare treat. Me sure. in the driver's seat, you Fine, in the passenger Dennis, seat. I've looked forward to this for a long time. <laughs> you, know, you haven't seen me drive, though. Um, so, <laughs> So what do you think of, of this year's uh, SAC, the SAC oh, 28? Yeah, it's a wonderful organization, and they're having it in uh, Nashville this year, which is uh, a new place for us, but this fabulous racing facility, and in this part of the country, we've got wonderful weather for it. When this all began, Carol, could you have ever envisioned it turning out like this? No, I was just trying to build 100 cars to see if I could blow off the Corvettes, and. I've had the most fabulous 40 years that anybody could ever have. I never dreamed that it would turn out like this and have so many people uh, that, that know about my cars or even know about me. I thought that by this time I'd be planted somewhere and it'd all be over. And here I am at 80 years old enjoying a heck of a day. It's about living your dream and That's you right. have done that. Well, I've done that and I'm very fortunate, and, but it's people like you that have made people aware of the fact that I've done that and and you all are the people that a, f a few of you in this business have, have created that well, for I, me. I appreciate that Carol. Let's just let's just keep living our dreams. Let's hope everybody does. Thanks Carol. Dennis. Thank you for everything. Dennis you're wonderful. It's a pleasure I to be with you. I wish at least another 80. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I'm Dennis. Carol is a really amazing guy. A true original. And speaking of originals, check out this original owner Cobra. Joe, you're the original owner of this 64 Cobra? Yes, I am. Unbelievable. You know, I've seen a lot of Mustangs, the Shelby Mustangs, in this in this green, Highlander green, I think it's called. Right. Yes, I've it never is. seen a Cobra. No, it's rare. What's the deal? This car originally was painted Garsman Blue from the factory, and someone special ordered it in this Highlander green and never showed up to pick up the car. Lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> that was your lucky day in, in yeah. 1964. Yes. And. Uh, I mean, is that, is that like a, a special day in your heart? Well, let's put it this way. My mother still sends Chris, um, birthday cards to my car <laughs> every, every August 22nd. Well, that is great. Well, let's let's look at the, the, the 289 under the hood. Let's look oh, at what powers sure. this baby. I'd love to show it to you. Oh, man. 
It looks it looks brand new. I mean, you must have. It must be restored. It is totally restored. It is totally brand new. It is just perfect. Now, I mean, when you come to a judge show, do you get much trouble for this color going? Yeah, that, that that's not right. I'm sorry, sir. No, Dennis. It's it's documented in the registry, and if you look on page 101 under 2367, it tells the whole history of the car, including the white walls, the green paint and everything, and it's all documented with my original window sticker, the original so invoice. So you just say page 101. Page 101. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, man. Great car. My pleasure. Gary, I love this. A 66 Shelby GT350 H, H, which stood for? Hertz. Hertz. This was the Rent Eraser. Hertz Rent Eraser. You know, they were typically uh, like black with a gold stripe, right? Yes, sir. There was 53 that were red with gold. Is that all? Yeah. Wow. One of the 53. You know, I usually take the uh, the attitude of, don't be gentle, it's a rental. You know, I can't, <laughs> ima I can't imagine this thing's still around. It's it's incredible. You've obviously restored it. Yes, it was uh, restored in Green Bay, Wisconsin. A four-year oh, restoration. Four-year restoration. Yes, sir. Wow. But, you know, it, it looks great. I mean, can you imagine you could rent this thing? you go to Hertz uh, and get one of these. It would have been fun. Wouldn't it, though? <laughs> <laughs> That insurance probably put an end yeah, to that. I'm sure. Well, of course, under the hood, we're going to have a... Hypo 289. A Hypo 289. So this would be a solid lifter engine? Yes, it would. Boy, and that looks beautiful, too. Yeah. You can do a lot in four years, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> if you have the money. So would you rent it to me today? Uh, with the price is right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, great car, man. Thanks. Yeah. Have you ever heard the saying, less is more? Well, that's not a phrase you typically associate with street riding. But Daryl Mosley decided to go against the grain when he tore into his grandfather's old 54 Chevy pickup. And as you'll see, sometimes really cool things can come in small packages. Well, it's a bit of a brisk morning down here in Bartonville, Texas with Daryl Mosley. How are you doing, Daryl? Very good, Danny. And this really cool 54 Chev rod truck. I love this baby. I saw this a couple years ago, Daryl, first time, and I've been sort of tracking it ever since. This thing's cool. Tell me the story of this truck. Well, in 1985 or 6, my grandfather uh, was coming to town intentionally to trade pickups, but he broke down on the way to my, I'm in the car business, he broke down, and so I'd go out there at the wrecker and pick him up, and we switched titles and um, you got yourself a 54 Chevy. Got myself a 54 Chevy pickup. <laughs> One very interesting at the time, I just knew it was my grandfather's and I wanted to keep it. I didn't want it to get away. And then in about 97 or 98, me and my brother in law just wanted to make it run and we made it run. All well, right. I guess, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I just I, I love what you've done to it and, and almost more, I love what you haven't done to it. I mean, it's, it, it's, it, it just stands out to me. Let's talk about some of the stuff you have done though. Okay. I mean, you, gotta, you obviously got a chop going on the top here. Yeah, about three how much? Half, three and a half inch chop. Actually, the very top of the truck is Ford. So it's really quite, it's, it's sort of a Frankenstein it, here, right? It is. Yeah. And you've, you've uh, obviously dropped her down a little bit. Yes, it's uh, dropped about as low as I can get it and be safe. One of the things that grabbed me when I first saw this truck was, was in fact the interior. I, I absolutely love what you've done with the dash, which is almost nothing. Right. <laughs> yes, I, I knew I wanted to reverse the colors on my gauges. They came black with kind of a light green uh, number on them. So I had them change from white and then put the black uh, numbers on them. And then my painter, when I took it to him, I said, I want something on my dash. And he's a real creative guy. And he uh, wanted to do something in the middle and kind of go off to the sides. But in the end, he came up with the kind of white base, you know, to, to yeah. go off into the flames. And then flaming and just, off from both gauges. Yeah. I mean, it's so cool. Yeah, now, this, you got this knob up, up there. What's that one? That is my windshield wiper knob, just in case I ever do put the wiper on. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, why is it up there? That's the original spot. That's where it was. The original spot. So you just left it. Yeah. Well, you know, you got the flames coming all the way back. I just, you know, I, I love the look of the thing all the way to the to the rear here. The way you've done the, the Chevy and the paint is cool. Yeah, that's, again, the painter come up with that using all the colors he could from the flames just to tie it into the Chevrolet. It just turned out real well. Oh, it just it is killer. But I tell you, the first time I, I saw this, the thing that just absolutely sold me on it was what you got under the hood. <laughs> I mean, it absolutely sold me. Pop this baby open. The six cylinder. A six cylinder. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I mean, when everybody's cramming 502s and crate hemis and stuff in these and, and, and getting, you know, as much power as possible to stand out as much as possible, this really stands out. 
It really does, and a, an older friend of mine helped me come up with this idea, and it's got some different pistons in it, lots of head work done to it, and uh, obviously a aluminum intake, Clifford intake with a Edelbrock four barrel headers, Then I have a Muncie four speed, and then a four nine inch rear end to carry it all out. I just enjoy the reaction that I get. I, after I got through it, I thought, you know, that's, that's probably gonna be the first thing I change is the motor, but I, after, you know, I've had a lot of success with that little six-cylinder, so obviously it'll stay there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Now, did somebody build that? Yes, uh, Wayne Calvert in Denton, Texas. I just absolutely love it. And you drive the heck out of it. Drive it, yes, I do. And I saw you down at Cruising the Coast uh, yes. a couple times. So. Yes, been down there twice, been on the Hot Rod Power Tour, and uh, I drive a lot just daily, you know, around town, back and forth to work. Well, let's go drive it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I guess I reach in, eh? Yeah, I just pop down on the handle. Oh, yeah. Fire this baby up. All right. Welcome back to My Classic Car as we do a little cruising in Daryl Mosley's killer Chevy pickup. I love the eight ball shifter. You got a Hurst shifter and, and, and great seat. I mean, it really, really fits in there. Where'd that come out of? That's actually a Chevy dump truck seat. You know, they had the big four speed or yeah. big, uh, transmission and standard shifts and I uh, had the recess for that shifter and it just played right into what I was doing. It's you know? perfect, isn't it? Perfect, yeah. Daryl spent over two years on this project, consulting frequently with his uncle who was instrumental in getting Daryl into the hobby. One of the main reasons he never changed the engine was because he built it to drive, not just take it to shows. And driving is just what he does. In the three years since it's been finished, Daryl's put over 10,000 miles on it. It's got a really throaty sound to it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. You just want to kind of get into it. I, mean, uh, I can tell that. Uh, it's kind of throaty sounding. This baby is gorgeous, and it's a testament to why people customize. Daryl was able to keep his grandfather's truck for sentimental reasons, but at the same time, upgrade it to his liking. Some of the things he did were shaving the door handles and Frenching the antenna, adding air conditioning and LED taillights. But one of the most unique customizations was the front grille. He actually found another 54 Chevy and took its front bumper, chopped it in half and turned it upside down to create a grille that sits much lower to the ground. It's got a mean look to it. It does. It's kind of low down and, uh -huh. <laughs> and then with the white flames bursting into all that color, kind of the great white. It has all the right look. It, it does. That's such a tough grill too. I, mean, that, I love it. Yeah, I didn't want a bumper. And I, it was real hard to come up with something that would work, you know. Well, I think you came up with it. I definitely think you came up with it. Daryl says he's done with this one, and now just wants to have fun with it. All right. <laughs> what a cool truck. <laughs> Daryl, this thing is just great. It's, it's everything I thought it would be. Well, I appreciate you coming, Dennis. Oh, it was a man. great time. It was a blast. You do great work. Thanks. Appreciate we're gonna it. Have to, we're going to have to check your next project when you get it done. All right. We'll be we'll, back. We'll be in touch. Huh? All right.